You just can't talk about it. You have to right. be. And then you have to model the behavior to succeeding generations. This is the importance of eldership. In fact, young people, um, certainly generation Y, Z, and generation alpha, don't really even honor or understand the concept of elders. Hmm. They call them just old people. Hmm. Right? So that's why when I speak today, I frame myself as an elder. There is no or little respect for elders. Right. And there is a huge gap between elders and succeeding generations. That gap needs to be closed. Hmm. And our young people ought to be developing meetings and town hall panels that simply say a gathering of the elders where young people talk to elders and vice versa. Wow. Old people ain't even thinking about meeting with old people. Wow. Right? Not at this all. This is great, Dr. Frazier. And so may I ask a question? Sure. So you mentioned a few things <laughs> that, I, that I, I have a number of questions on, but I'll focus it in on two. The first is you mentioned the need to be intellectually, intellectually curious and to read and read m consistently after you graduate college. I think about some of the writers who I admire and just hearing their stories on how they prepare for books and to who, write who, books. What, what writers do you admire? Wow. You think wow, I, I, I admire uh, Timothy Keller is one writer. He's a, he's a Christian writer, a deep thinker. He's produced a lot of relevant work that helps me as a person who's in the city and navigating faith in the city. That's really assisted me. Mm -hmm. uh, I also admire Juliet K. Walker. She, you know, wrote I the book. Okay, well, I, I had her at the Power Network conference. Yes, yes. I, uh, I <laughs> contributed to her Encyclopedia of Black Business. I yes. Black There's... Business Ethics. Wow. So, so I have uh, two of her books, The History of Black Business in America and Free Frank. And for me, it was just valuable, again, to know our history. and Free, Free Frank McCorder. Exactly. So learning about things such as slave entrepreneurship, that history just that small piece of history of recent history just inspired me to say, I have no excuse, right? If people were starting businesses as slaves, I have no excuse. And that is what I owe, you know, the legacy of those who fought for freedom here in America. And then another author who I really admire, his name is Alexander Osterwalder. He wrote, writes a lot of business books about business model design. And so that really helps me to, again, understand systems and that you don't just need to have a value proposition, but you have to have an entire system that will allow you to create that value proposition, monetize that value proposition and sustain it. So those are some of the three, a, a lot of business related books and faith related books. Um, I've just, you know, I've just recently gotten back into reading fiction. So right now I'm reading Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, just to, to keep that creativity flowing. Uh, but lately, my focus really has been on both faith and business. So a lot of my reading is focused on that. Are you reading any historical texts, let's say, by James Baldwin? I haven't. So I've 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 downloaded. Um, t tell me on the what's on the mountaintop. Uh, take me. I've I've downloaded a few of James Baldwin's books. Go tell it on the mountaintop, being one of them. But I haven't. Go tell it on the mountain. Yeah, go tell it on the mountain, but I've started it, but I haven't finished it. So, but it's in the, it's in the queue. Mm -hmm. Have you read any books on our ancient history? So I've recently- Anthony Browder, for example. I have, and I've gotten some, some you know of Dr. Who, Henry Gates. You know who Anthony Browder is? Anthony Browder. No, I do not know who Anthony Write Browder is. Down. Write his name down. Yes and read the Browder files. The Browder files. 
He is our foremost Egyptologist. Mm. And I've taken several groups to Africa with, to Egypt with Anthony Browder. Mm. You need to know something about it. So he has a very easy read on our ancient history. You need to know that. Okay. Right? What do you think of Henry Gates is huh? his work? Henry Louis Gates? Dr. Henry Louis good. Gates? I mean, Henry's good. is good. Okay. Um, um, but you need to know, uh, Henry deals more with m uh, modern black history. Mm -hmm. Now, modern black history is about 400 years. Right. But if you saw the history of black people spread out on a chart by years and dynasties. Wow. You will see that that 400 years is like a grain of sand. Right. Compared to our entire history. It's just a bump in the road. Right? The history beyond that is far beyond your imagination, hmm. right? So all you really know is about a li very tiny, little, very bad period. Wow. For black people, 400 years. But there's 8,000 years. Remember, we're the first human beings. Hmm. So there's 8,000 years, Nina, that you don't have a clue about. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so what you really know about you is nothing. Hmm. You know nothing. Wow. You have no clue on who you really are. Now, don't tell me that that does not impact once you do know who you are, who you are that that will not impact how you see yourself your self-confidence, your personal pride, and your personal esteem. Once you know your lineage, your DNA, what you're capable of, that puts your life in a whole different perspective. But most of our young people, your age, ain't got a clue. They just think it's some old bullshit. Wow. Most, if I were to ask a thousand college students, and I have done this, who is Sheikh Auntie Diop? There would be nobody that raised their hand. They have mm -hmm. no clue who this man is. Who is Chancellor Williams? Um, they know who Frederick Douglass is. Who is Akhenaten? See, these are just probably, you, you, you have no clue who Akhenaten is. And, and, and you're a black woman. Hmm. And you have no clue. Akhenaten was one of the great early pharaohs of ancient Egypt. When you see his picture, it's up in the uh, Cairo Museum. He has a big, thick lips and a big nose. Absolute black characteristics. He's the first person on earth that said there is only one God. Mm. He's the first person on earth there were around the world at that time, people had many different gods. He said, oh no, there's only one. He was married to Nefertiti. Mm. Have you heard of Nefertiti? Yes, yes, I've heard of Nefertiti. Do <laughs> you know who Akhenaten and Nefertiti's child was? Can't name it off, I can't name it off the top. There you go. You don't know. King Tut. Mm. Tutankhamen. 
probably one of the most famous but useless pharaohs in history. He did mm. really nothing. But Akhenaten created the concept for the world of a single god. Mm. Right? Um, and I could go on and on and on and on and on. But <clears throat> we have no clues of that. Right? So and 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 you and and you and your generation have no clues of what africans contributed to humankind the first written language mm. we were we were into math and science before as i said when white people were in caves you cannot build the pyramids of Giza that are still standing to this day without being geniuses in geometry, math, and science, right. and engineering. We're doing that three and four thousand years before Christ. Black people, mm -hmm. but most black people don't have a clue, and they're not intellectually curious enough to even want to know. That's the real rub. Mm. They don't even want to know. That is what I call being dense. Wow. Read. The average American, it's not just a black problem, it's an American problem. The average American reads one book a year. If you read one book a month in five years, you will have read five, uh, 60 books, and the average American will have only read five. You'll wow. Yeah. I read 100 books a year. I have a high school diploma in carpentry. I do not <laughs> have a college degree. Yeah. Right? I'm not yeah. saying don't get a college degree. I'm just saying, <clears throat> unless you're intellectually curious and you can become a critical thinker, it won't matter. You will be mediocre at best in life. Wow. And how do you select the books that you read? Hmm? How do you select the books that you read? Is it just based on what you're curious on at the moment? Well, let's see. Yeah, this is what I'm reading right now. You can't Life read. After Google. Yes. Uh -huh. and then what does it say? Let's, the, let's fall, the fall of big data and the rise of the blockchain economy. That's what I'm reading right now. That's the future. Yes. The fall of Google. This is written by George Gilder. So you, you won't know who George Gilder is. Just mm -hmm. Google him after we finish. Yes, sir. The futurist. One of the world's greatest futurists. Right? So there is unlimited choices of books. Unlimited. There are more choices than you'll ever have time to read. Right. But whatever you're interested in. Focus. Now, and again, I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to your audience. Yes. All right. So when you start reading, what you're going to find is you're going to you're going to find yourself around a bunch of readers. That's what you're going to find. There are actually black reading clubs. Except most people, young black brothers and sisters. Um, don't even know that they exist because mm. they ain't interested in reading. They're glued to social media. Now, there's nothing wrong with social media that you can't solve, just like there's nothing wrong with television that if you ingest it, in controlled and strategic ways. There's good information on your phone and there's good information on television and there's good information in the movies. There's a lot of instructive stuff out here. Mm -hmm. so you just have to pick and choose. And again, I'm not, when I say you, I, I mean your audience. Yes, I understand. But this is going to be the key to upward mobility for black people in the 21st century because we are now living in a global economy 
anybody living in an apartment or garage can do what you do. <laughs> yes, yes, sir, that's right? true. The choice of options that employers have or businesses have is unlimited. And so if I choose to pay you $10 an hour or $15 an hour is because I've decided that that's all you're worth. Hmm. And if you don't like it because you think you're worth more, then leave. Because the line to get that job for that amount per hour is around the block. That's good. So excellence bordering on exceptionalism has to be our standard. Mm. When you're excellent at what you do, you will never have to worry about competition. You'll never have to get in anybody's line. People will get in line for you. It is when you are mediocre to average, that's when you have to worry about competition. Mm. Right? Yes. I don't ever worry about competition because I'm exceptional. I'm say, I say it with humility and what I do. So <clears throat> in, at 75 years old, I have never, ever had to look for a job. Because every job I had from mopping floors on the midnight shift at LaGuardia Airport for three years, if you go to LaGuardia Airport, go down into the maintenance department, there's a plaque on the wall, it's me. I was the best floor mopper in the history of LaGuardia Airport. What do I know? How you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. Mm. So that's my fourth piece of advice to the young brothers and sisters out there. Be awesome at what you do, and you will never have to worry. Wow. Thank you when so Google, much, Dr. Frazier. When Google goes to the campus to recruit, or Microsoft goes to the campus to recruit, or Apple goes to the campus to recruit, or Procter & Gamble goes to the campus, I was, of course, in leadership a leadership position for 13 years with Procter & Gamble, which means I had recruiting responsibility. And I requested to recruit historically black colleges. I didn't mm -hmm. want to recruit at local white colleges. I wanted to give brothers and sisters an opportunity to get in, into that company. But we were very, very selective. Right. And the line was very short. Same thing with Google, same thing with Apple, same thing with Microsoft. You think you could be mediocre or average or graduate from your college with a C, a grade mm -hmm. average, and get a job at Google? Hell to the no. <laughs> Do you know what percentage of cultural minorities are employed at Google? Do you know the numbers, right? The number, 2%. We're 14% of the American population. What's Google's reason? Uh, what's Apple's reason? What's Microsoft's reason? We ain't good enough. Mm. That's their reason. They have standards. If you want to work at Google, you've got to meet their standards. I gave a speech at USC last year. I was walking to the auditorium across the campus it was 40% Asians. And I said to the dean, I said, what's up with this? It was Asians everywhere. He says, oh, we have an embargo on Asians right now because they're way above their percentage of population in the United States. But our challenge is they ace the, uh, the SATs and they ace the ACTs. Mm. And we don't give them scholarships, they pay full rate with an aced SAT. So that's what we're competing with. You're wow. competing with Asian people who are acing the uh, SATs. Wow. So if you ain't acing the SATs, you're gonna get a lesser school. And you might get in for affirmative action but guess what? Affirmative action ain't going to keep you in that school. Mm. There are no affirmative action grades. Mm. 
So brothers and sisters, man up and woman up. You got it like that. You got the awesome, the most awesome DNA in the history of humankind. We are God's first people. So do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Frazier. I appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, this is great. <laughs> Man, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, there's so so much that our viewers are going to take now, from you this. Now, you were recording that? Yeah, it was all recorded, yes. Okay, because I didn't see cause Normally, I see a little red recording thing up there. Yes, it um, it's recording. Okay. Yeah, Good. maybe it's in the cloud. So maybe that's, <laughs> maybe just because I see it on my end. Because I wasn't going to repeat it. I was just, uh, no notes, just going from my heart. No, I, I really appreciate it. And I'm I'm looking forward to to sharing it with, with the students. I think it'll really be a stimulus of wake up. You may uh, make it two parts because it was, it was long. We were yeah. how, an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. Probably an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Now I know I, I was a bit philosophical, mm -hmm. um, a, a bit straight, no chaser, but I just think they need to hear that. Yes, they do. They do. They I think it. people have gotten too, too taking it too easy on them. Yeah, honestly, they ain't, they ain't hearing it at home, and they're not hearing it in school. Man, no, I totally agree. And I am, especially when I think about the way that our community gets so excited around sports, and you understand that we're not going to take this lightly in terms of your work ethic. So why would we not go just as hard, just as diligently in other areas? Your coach will not be like, oh, yeah, that's all right. No, what are you doing? <laughs> right? So thank you, Dr. Frazier. And if, if you ever need help with engaging young audiences around wealth creation, you know, I, I, am, I am here to help. My hand is raised. All right. Now, if you have something, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to make an offer to these young kids for the Power Network Conference. But uh, you can you can may offer them yes. So a student registration is eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Student meaning seventeen to twenty five. Uh, so I'll give it to them for one hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. Now most of them are not going to be able to make it. They're students. They don't have the money to you know. But it's in it's in Houston, and they can go on Power Networking. They can't get that offer on my website. Okay. But, but they can get it straight through me. Okay. I don't know when you're going to run this, and but but they want that offer at one hundred ninety nine dollars for us. They got to be a student, seventeen to twenty five. They email me, gfraser at frasernet dot com. All right. Say in the subject line, I'm in. I love it. Their name and their cell phone number. I'll call them personally. Wow. Write it up as a student. You got to be 17 to 20. We're not talking about grown folk. We're talking right. About <laughs> right. Absolutely. That's 17 to 25. Name and cell phone in the subject line. I'm in. Okay. Email you directly. That's on behalf of Dr. Fraser. Thank you, Dr. Fraser. So, I hope I got in much, or if not most, of what you wanted. Yes, you did. You did. You absolutely did. <laughs> In such a unique way. I'm absolutely. And it was it was through personal story. It was it was very sufficient. So thank you. Good.